And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. We're on the road coming to you from the beautiful Cambridge-based headquarters of Isotope. You see all those folks behind us. The judging of the Indaba Pensado contest is taking place. We'll be announcing those winners December 17th. You're at the place. Pensado's place! talented people. Um, now I know why their products sound so good. A lot of musicians, that surprised me. Mm -hmm. You guys are amazing. Thanks for the hospitality. I wish you guys could be here. Uh, cool place, right? Uh, beyond cool. Um, everything that you guys like about Isotope products is emulated in the people that we're sitting with yeah. now. The facility is incredible. We're going to shoot a couple of shows here this week, which we will share with you. Uh, there's a reason Isotope is at the at the top of the heap. Hey guys, it's great to see you. Hope your week in audio was good. Um, a quick hello to our strategic partners. You know them just like we do every week. The Blackbird Academy, Vintage King, Avid, Isotope, DTS, Lander, Fab Factory, Recording Connection, and Studio 202 DC. They're all with us on this ride. Um, but we got a special encore effort for you. Dave, why don't you tell them what it is? Oh, it's, it's the Showtech episode. You know how much I love that episode. Oh, uh, it's easier to rerun it than for me to go look it up, so we're going to rerun it. <laughs> well, have at it. <laughs> Enjoy the Showtech episode. We'll see you next week. We're coming to you from Isotope. Everybody wave. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our desk, Showtech. Hey, guys. Hey, nice to meet welcome, you. Welcome, man. Proud kids from the South as well, actually, there you in go. the Netherlands. Is that right? Yeah, we're from the South. There you we go. have, like, the soft G, what they say in the Netherlands. Like, <laughs> it's a whole Southern table. Yes, exactly. Man, um, you know, before Dave asks the first question, I must tell you that when we had a chance to reach out to you and have you come on the show, yeah. just our production crew was so excited. Right. <laughs> They've been yeah. talking to me for the last couple of weeks about having you there. We are thrilled wow. to have you there. We're thrilled that you're fans. Thank you, Tyler. Shout out. Yeah, She's no, no. Everybody, huge fan. Everybody was. Fire away, David. Guys, um, when, you're, when, uh, when you're creating a piece of music, is, is the live performance always in your mind, or you just create and then adapt mm -hmm. it to the live show, or do you always use the same piece of music for both? It's, it's different for every track, but I, I think it's the good thing between us because we're brothers and we have a different thought on music is that I always have the, um, the live, uh, uh, live, like the, the live experience on the track. So yeah. I might be like, oh no, this is not going to work on a dance floor. He, on the other side, is more like, yeah, but I want to play more on the, um, the real music, yeah, like the music part, right? Gotcha. So we have to find a balance in between that. And, and, and the thing is, it's the live feel, because if you're actually playing live, we tried it in the past, like playing with, with synths and, and, and loops and stuff, you're not interacting with the crowd because you're just busy ah. and actually pr producing a track live for yourself and people are like looking at some guy like doing nerdy you're stuff, you know? With the machines instead of yeah, the and so that's the difference between like this, our music and like a, a band, they play live. It's like interaction music-wise. We do interaction for us is like like easy MC, like mm -hmm. talking to the crowd mm -hmm. and hyping them up. And I think like you're more like a sandbag if you just stand there and you're like just <laughs> touching the knobs. Like yeah, who's go who's, go who's gonna spend money on this guy? You know? Remember the Dead Mouse tweet? How'd you relate to that? The one about <laughs> DJs aren't DJs anymore. They just play place recorded tracks. Yeah. It, it's 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 it's. Uh, we were talking about yesterday. The, the, there's a good thing and a bad thing about like the good thing is DJ spread out your music, uh -huh. but the magic still happens in the studio. So, mm -hmm. but and some sounds may be offending. I don't mean it that way, but DJs take sometimes credits for the tracks that are produced by other people, and that's mm -hmm. a mistake a lot of people make. Uh -huh. Like. Oh, a great DJ, but maybe he only played one of his own tracks, you know? Uh, and no. Magic still happens in the studio, but the good thing about DJs is worldwide, and there are so many clubs and events going on that you ha you need them. They're like messaging your music and spreading it around all yeah. over, but over the now world. Now you mentioned that as well. It's, it's also as, as like, if, if we are booked in a club and people want to see us, they, they know that we mostly play like 60, 70% own produced tracks or remix. So and exclusive stuff. Yeah, exclusive stuff. So that's the good side of being a DJ and a producer at the same time. So I think that's like also... That's a new thing now, yeah. right now. Like most of DJs are DJ producers or producer DJs, whatever right. you prefer. Right, right, right. When you guys are creating, do you... 
do you get a drum beat first, or do you get a melody first, or do you get chord changes first? Uh, or because there's two of you, it all kind of comes together and the fight uh, ensues and what <laughs> no, comes the, out we the, hear? The, the good thing is, uh, I've got my piano at home and 70% like uh, like uh, begins on the on the piano, the chord progressions mm. and the melodies, oh, and then okay. I mostly send him an audio file like it's so distorted, like, like this. Yeah, yeah, but it sounds great on the iPhone. Mm. If you record your your piano, it sounds amazing. Like a little mm. distorted drive, it's it's crazy. But I send him this. It's tune is doesn't, like doesn't um, in in Dutch doesn't Showtech mean distortion in Dutch. No. <laughs> no it's, it's, ah, I got him, I got him. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> no, I think we never go into the studio without an ID, and, and I think most of the time... It's, uh, oh, say that again, that's so important. Like, yeah, like most of the times we don't, don't go into the studio without an ID, no. so we always have a, 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 a thing that... Like, okay, let's Otherwise you're just messing around, like, what should we do? And if you have an exact plan, you'll finish your track within a one or two days, because you know what you're doing. If you're just right. looking and don't know where you're heading to, you... You're just like, uh, let's well, you know, try it's funny it. if, you, if, if, if you were two people or two persons and he's playing the piano or the melody on the, on the keyboard, I'm always like, okay, what's going to happen with the drop then? So I'm already mm. planning the next thing that's going to happen yeah. after that. And maybe he's going to tweak the thing for five hours. I'm like, you know, but still, if we're going to... And another thing is like, uh, some stuff starts at the piano at home, but a lot of stuff starts. And that's, that's a great thing that we learned for producers and DJ. Uh, producing is so, it's such a different thing than DJing. And yeah. if you go to big festivals and you see how people react and respond to music, yeah. it gives you great inspiration for the studio. Like, wow, I never realized this works for such a great crowd. For instance, this, uh, this kind of track, like, oh, I don't like it, I don't play it. We're at a festival and our colleague DJ is playing it. And I'm like, Jesus, this is insane. It's, uh, you don't feel that energy in a studio, yeah, you know? Right. That's right. So well, the com usually, usually Shord has, has that nailed. He knows what the crowd wants, right? Yeah, so he's, he's always really jumping on you. He's yeah, really but that, that's that's. Uh, I think that's a good thing. But, but like about us, like I'm 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 in, and it's good for me. I'm the the, the easy kid here. And I, I think okay, this is gonna work or not. And uh -huh. he and he wants to play around like Mozart. I'm like, dude, this is not gonna work <laughs> on a dance floor. People are like, guess they're gonna laugh. This so it's a good. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, it's that's, a good. It's a good kind of like me in here. Yeah, well, so. it's, it's like a good balance. So, yeah. And you notice that they cut each other off the same way the we same do way, too. Yeah, I love this. That's so I, cool. I, I just get to watch. This is wonderful. You, you know when they're finished talking and they know no himself. Like he's like talking, I'm like they don't want to hear that crap. <laughs> Scott Storch once told me that one of the reasons that so many people write great melodies over his tracks is he's always got a melody in his head when he's creating the track. Is that the same for you too? Because your melodies are as good as it gets. I, I mean, I, I your melodies are what separate you from a lot of people. I, I played piano for three years and I kind of hated it playing from a book, existing stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was great to practice and, and to, to progress the chords and stuff, but I just wanted to make my own melodies. And uh, But I, I, I can make them, of course, but I need him as well because he, he can well, tell like, oh, this sucks, this is crazy. I'm yeah. like, no, 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 the other one I was better, go feedback. back. I need it. It's yeah. really important for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. I just love melodies. I think a real good melody can be like a crazy chorus on a pop song, like sure. an explosion of emotions. Well, and we that's talked about important. it as well before. Like sometimes, uh, if we're looking for a, a top line on our tracks, it's really hard to find a good singer doing something different than the melody because the melody is sometimes the, the whole so. the whole song, and it's yeah, like, yeah. what are you going to do now? It's, it's kind of hard sometimes. Yeah, it's really hard sometimes. So now, if you work on a track, we just make the melody mostly after the top line because it's just hard to do. A top line after like a big track. Uh, mm. I think I, I personally think that your your tracks lend themselves for for vocal melodies. They're, they're, first of all, first of all, any one of your tracks could be used as a movie soundtrack. You've got all that drama and all the bigness. Yeah. You know, it's it's like a, a movie like 300. All your songs could be the last thing you hear in the movie on one level. We, we always talk about it's that. So <laughs> it's like, now you see the girl walking away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, he's playing this melody, isn't it crazy? No, I see a car crashing. No, <laughs> but wait a minute, I'm not through. And then you got this crazy cheap ass little sound that comes in over that. And it usually goes right to left. And it usually has a saw wave and it's usually yeah. distorted. It's like- Cheap ass in a good way though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what what I'm what what I love about what you do is it's so hard for us in today's world to earn a living and simultaneously get our our personality personalities and who we are in our music. You know, there's so many outside influences trying to channel us in and mm -hmm. pigeonhole us and put us in one genre. Yeah. And you've you've been very successful at 
getting both, you know, both your personalities. I was intentionally trying to get you guys to show that early on because I think that's so important. If, 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 if you can type 100 words a minute but don't, don't have any life experiences to talk about, there's no point in being a good typist if, you, if you're a great musician but don't have the life experiences to get your pain, the suffering, the, the sexual exploits, the, all this other stuff into your music, you don't really have a whole lot to say, you know? I, I, and I you think that that dynamic gets enhanced by doing so many live shows. You, yeah. you guys are actually doing yeah. theater, so you get that feedback right so away, nice. right? Yeah. Show after show after show, which informs what you then can go do at your piano or by the time you go in the studio, you've yeah. got all that resourcing already in you. You're living yeah. it, like, yeah. you're not reading about it, you're actually living it. Well, yeah. we, we, last year we had a United States to tour by bus, and we did it for seven weeks, mm -hmm. and we came home with so much inspiration. Like, the whole, that whole seven weeks, so was like the whole day. year. Was a whole year for us. Yeah. We could seriously make a whole album after that one. Yeah. Because we just had so many new ideas and, and thoughts about tracks and what's, what's working well or not. And um, yeah, I think last year we also had like one or ten flights only, so by wow. traveling. Wow. And then we have to do also music in the plane. And that's the second that sucks, thing that's though. really. Um, it sucks though, but that's, that's the second thing that, that we've like uh, discovered that okay, we have this much time and we have to make music. So he's already playing some melodies on this little keyboard yep. in the plane and it's looking really nerdy, but it works out. It's We're actually going to start a segment about being on the road and recording yeah. on the road. It's and fun though. Planes and trains and buses and limos and hotel rooms. Yeah. You got to do it when you can do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. always the best situation. Exactly, but it's part of it. If you want to like reach that, that top or want to do that thing that you like, there are certain things like included that not nice and like really suck but you gotta do it you know you right. gotta fly six hours every day and you honest. gotta do a security check on the airport two twice a day and it sucks but you get used to it and it brings you there where you want to go so it's fine yeah. yeah but you know what it's also like we we're so used to our own studio because our mixing on this this is just like the the wall of, of our like the music this is our thing we want to mix in here and we were like oh like, we cannot work in another studio and since we get used to that. It's easier for us yeah, to adapt right. to so the situation, yeah, and we always, and yeah, and we always come home and play that track finally in our studio and do the final mix down gotcha. there. Gotcha. And uh, you have to just work it out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can also stay home and do nothing. It's pretty. Guys, nice. another thing, another thing I, that that strikes me over the years when I listen to your music is sometimes you listen to music and it moves you like it just moves you like in a dance kind of way or sometimes it moves you in an elect, intellectual way like classical or jazz your music really creates images in my head for me like uh, there's a psychoacoustic element that you're doing like like mm. like you've got a sound that you've used a few times and it sounds like in a James Bond movie when the when the volcano is about to blow up that buzzer that's going on you know the sound I'm talking about yeah. right <laughs> and you turn that into lead sounds and then, and like, it, so like half my body's thinking, okay, a, a nuclear reactor is about to blow up. I've got to get out of town. And then you, and then you juxtapose that with this really soft, nice piano layered pad, you know? Yeah. And so you create these, these, God, this question's never going to end. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, and so I get these images, but they're not just an image. They're images that fight each other in my brain. Is that is that part of your background and where you came from when you were kids? You know that 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 teenage thing. You're not a man. You're not a a boy. And you and, and like your early music reflected that in a big way. Yeah. Uh, and is it on purpose? I think our the whole point of making our music is that we're still men and boys at the same time. Right. You know right. and. You want to make it like sound like really grown up, but also like really ragey and just don't think about stuff and a little crazy. So f I think that's the balance that we create in our tracks. Like we're still 16 when we when we're looking at each other, like oh this is crazy, you know. Yeah. But you also want to surprise people and like being ahead of time and just make something unique. And I oh, think we we're always looking for a really crazy balance between a lot of energy, but also a lot of sweetness in a melody mm -hmm. or and mm -hmm. a crazy like. N nice vibe in the track. Yeah, I think it, like back in the days, we also <coughs> had to kick down some doors to get what we want, and that's was that you could hear it in our music. Like, come on, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, like we got me going for it, and like, and, and now where we're like, I'm 29, he's 30, and we are on a different, uh, chuk, chuk. Yeah, yeah, no, li different uh, age, <laughs> but still like. 
you're going through a certain phase, and you can hear it in, in, in back in your music as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. And I think, to be honest, the last the last well, one and a half year, two years of Showtech are the best years so far. Mm -hmm. We were, made really crazy hard music like five or ten years ago, like crazy hard, like rocky and 145 BPM. And it was still cool though. For back then, it was really nice. And yeah. now, and now right. we feel like this time of our life, we feel like we should do this, and it feels really good, mm -hmm. you know. Just so you're not afraid to evolve. Which no, I, I love, love it. You know, it keeps you moving forward. We yeah. even came from a really dark techno scene. I went to a raves where like we're actually called show tech. We yeah, did like tech dark techno, techno, like like ah. 160 only beats and distorted hi hats, no melodies. <laughs> <laughs> like, for like nine hours. And then, <laughs> then I figured like how... <laughs> That's where I came from, you know? Yeah. So. But then I figured like how I'm gonna implant the, the piano and the musical touch in this music, it didn't work. And it, it was like, oh, we're restricted. We should do some more stuff. Well, that's also the reason why we evolved a little bit because we knew we could do more than we did in the past with all respect. So gotcha. uh, we just want to uh, show the world that we are capable of doing more than what we did. And we don't regret what we did, yeah. but we know there was more for us to, to, to reach. The mountain was higher. Love so uh, yeah. well, if you're not le if you're not leading your following, you've got Absolutely. you know you guys have led your audience. You've taught them. You've grown with them. They've grown with you. You've you've not disappointed, and and uh, you know that's very difficult to do. I mean, you you went through yeah. the great groups go through that transition, and that's the hardest transition there that's is. is and, but you did it. And to your point, I think that people who get there and become sort of great, part of what they have is a fearlessness. Because yeah. you're, you're gonna you're gonna catch hell along the way, and you got to stay up in the fight and move exactly. forward. And and we've all gone through that. And people don't know that that part's not that much fun. Exactly. No, <laughs> but I, we can, we, but we you can learn from it. Honestly, tell you that there's been a time when we switched our genre. It was pretty pretty tough, you know. People not liking it, and like you're you're whoa, human. Whoa, whoa. Some people not like. No, it. yeah, some uh, people. Uh, and most and, did. Well, okay, no, no, and the, the, the biggest challenge is that, that to keep your old fans and gain new fans. Right, absolutely. And that's the challenge. Absolutely. And then it, you know what it is? That, that challenge is so nice to do. And even if it doesn't work out, you know you tried and you did what you wanted to do. And that's the most important thing. And you learn from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you learn other things and you, yeah. you evolve. Yeah, absolutely. Well, because I, I did boxing for seven years. I went to the ring without no fear. And I had to make a music change. Like, fuck what I'm going to do. You know, like, what's going to happen? And I was like, suddenly, like, whoa. I was a little bit like, there was a little bit of fear, of course, right? right? Exactly. But you have to get over it, and then. Well, since we had the first f bomb, on on, on fuck the police, on fuck the police, the wrong genre. <laughs> right after fuck the system. Wrong. Yeah, <laughs> which was that was the first that was the first time I got exposed to you guys. You guys were pretty angry back then. What was the what was, was that uh, like 147, 148? 146 to be exact. Oh, 146. Uh, I think uh, if you check it, it probably was 147. Uh, no, I'm I'm <laughs> a 120 sure it's 146. <laughs> Sounds like a contest. I uh, no, don't no right. need to make it a contest, I'm <laughs> sure. No, I, I, I played just, it like 300 bad. times. There you go. You got sit, the pioneers I, with the BPM like oh, 146. I should sit there and measure it, but I'm sorry. And that just that really kind of renewed my interest in the dance world because it was getting a little predictable and a little stale and that song came out and it had the same impact that I'm not going to take it, you know, uh, or um, we will rock you or all the great anthems. It was an, it was an angry anthem. It, it, it was. I, I, and the cool thing is what, like, we were in the studio and um, we wanted to do some different influence so we called in this, this hip-hop guy, a really friend of us, to do the lyrics because we want to have this like. We wrote the lyrics. Though. Yeah, we wrote the lyrics though. We were like high as fuck. Oh, sorry. Can I say? <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, back then it was cool. it was cool. Back then it was our age. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Back then it was cool. Don't, don't, don't apologize. Um, we and then we're in California, by the way. That's doesn't mean it. So like back then we were like angry kids or angry kids, like excited, you know. And sure. um, and um, we just wrote the lyrics. Uh, thinking of a guy who lived the life uh, and ended up going to a party and see us. That's the, the, the whole story. So this, this is a guy like who has this experience in life and wants to go crazy and he just hates the system. Yeah, and but that's how we felt as well. Like, yeah, back then, yeah. Fuck everything and we just want to have fun. And uh, yeah, there's like, there are certain things in life everybody like uh, uh, has to overcome and, and one of them like is... Like leaving your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Reality sets <laughs> in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For example, yeah, but like, yeah, we, we wrote down these lyrics actually within three minutes. And uh, we have to be honest, we got an inspiration from a movie sample. Like somebody said, I live for the weekends. And we're like, that's great to make it, like, make a whole track out of it. And we had just, just one minute speech, which sounds like an angry guy, but he's telling the truth. And uh, 
people loved it. It had like it was 2006 and it had like four million hits already. Wow. A lot by then it was like a lot. Right, absolutely. Wow. So especially, we especially it, it actually made us like famous in our in our in the in did, dance that, music. That, like that, who, that, who that, was that, Show Tech? Especially you know? in America. There's several songs of yours that I just can't stop listening to. Cannonball, Slow Down, uh, anything with Crunk in the title, um, <laughs> Hey, um, and I like Nobody's Perfect too, the, the Chris Brown thing you did. We'll talk about that in a minute. On Cannonball, um, back in the day, back when it was when disco was around, you, did, you didn't use reverb because the clubs were so big and yeah. echoey that, and you added reverb to it, then it reverbed in the club. But you guys use reverb in a really unique musical way. You like, they don't, the decays don't go on too long. No. Are, are you using like true verb or something a lot? Uh, well, we use the true yeah. verb, uh, the lexicon rooms, and the magic is the gate. Mm. Yeah, mm. but the also gate the for the timing. Is, that's nice. you know, we have crazy, we were actually looking Did you get that from me? N no, that, that's why it's so funny, because uh, we're looking one of your one of your episodes, like last week, mm -hmm. and I was like, he's doing the same tricks as we are, and you talk about no, it the same way. No, you're doing the same tricks I am. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you know? Maybe, no. No, I, I'm, I'm... Short, come on, man. <laughs> no, no, he's not backing you up, now. This is brother love. <laughs> this is brother love. He should back you up right here, but he was to, touching you, like, sure, go ahead. Sure, yeah. sure, well, I, sure, I get you sure. to the thing, I'll let you tip over and like, come back. No, so. uh, that's like creating space is important because we think like, okay, it should sound great in the car, but it should sound great in the club. So the, the, yeah. That's the, hard. You guys so do it though. You, you can sidechain even your reverb like crazy that's or, or, or duck, duck, duck your reverb I to a different... I duck it. Yeah. yeah, I do that. But how do you, what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish when you sidechain the you, reverb? You, you add, a, after you have a scent on, on, your, on, on, the, on the, the reverb channel, you put an extra compressor on it and then you send out a kick Fake kick. Fake kick to that channel, okay. and you just sidechain it to the kick. And like, na, 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 but mostly when it disappears, when but it's still there in the track, and it's not taking all the attention. Oh, did you get that, Changa? Where I know he's there down there, out here somewhere, writing that down as fast as he can. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, uh, th that song has so many cool elements. Um, um, the um, Yeah, I agree. The, the, I don't know how to describe it, but the, the little zippery, teary sounds that you guys yeah. love, um, and then and then you pitch them up, pitch them down, you do these real nice builds and climbs. Yeah. How, how are you, because you guys make your own sounds. Yeah, right. Every and once in a while, you slip a piano in, preset course, in, but you always layer or, or... Yeah, the thing is like... How do you crypt those, how do you... Those zippy kind of uh, sounds, uh, that, uh, almost like scratches. Like yeah, we 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 call it writing a sound actually now because like we're actually like when we need a sound we're like okay what do we need and we're like doing it like or, or you know it sounds weird but we actually gonna make it like we hear it in our heads and that's like yeah. the real sentences is really important in our in our producing because like of course there's like a hundred thousands of nice presets in Nexus or Massive and they're all they sound amazing. But the chance somebody else is using them as well is pretty, pretty big. Uh, like, like, but we never really destroy the sounds. We always work with a natural sound on top of with a like a destroyed yeah. sound sand channel. Yeah. So you always have that basic natural warm feeling, and then you on top you put this mostly stereo kind of distorted thing that makes it like crackle like. Nah. So the foundation but the is natural. The na foundation is always one, one frequency yeah. out there, is like in a lead at one or two k, and it's like. Boost only that thing, and then you create that, that dirty feeling without overdoing it. Mm. Mm. On, on, on Get Loose, you take me from the high 140s. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but we're, we're pretty up there, pushing 150. And then you give me one of those, da -da -da -da, those little zipper things, and you, yeah. and you drop me down to 120. 110. 110. 110. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And how did you calculate that? Did you just feel it? No, we 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 uh, worked on this track with. Uh, Is the it an increment of, of some kind of like? No, we just, why did we do that? We we just wanted the, the reason why we did all the BPM chain and stuff was that we wanted to show the people that we were not oh, yeah. about one genre. We could put any track in any genre. So even Moomatron, uh, like dubstep. dubstep or hard dance or electro house, yeah. house, whatever you want to name it, it's all in one track and it shows that whatever on kind of BPM you play the melody, it doesn't matter. It's 
that's it's all about the music. It doesn't oh you're this or you're that. There are no and boundaries. And, and, and that's energy the whole creates thought. the hardness of the track. Not only the 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 the, the kick, but yeah. also like. Maybe the slow part even sounds like more the slow part goes more urban, you know, Be and it's sometimes. just it's just the rhythm and yeah. how you. We just wanted to show how if how you approach a track is you can do it by different ways and just with changing BPMs you've got a whole different view on on a track. Now here's the good news: Are you loose because Baldy and Cresty are ready to uh, <laughs> to step up and uh, do batter's I just, box? I, I just thought of a new contest. What is it? Whoever can guess the exact number of mispronunciations of their names that we have, because I've, I've show, show, Sheward, Howard. Well, we, would I've, be, I've, <laughs> we would be the winners. <laughs> no, they've got, to, they've got to count them, and, and then we'll give it, then we'll, we'll invite you over to dinner at his house, whoever gets go. the exact amount. All right, well, let's roll batter's box and tee it, tee it up there, Mr. Pensado. Okay, a lot of you were, a lot of you were wondering why I didn't ask him what he used on distortion, so we're going to start batter's box off. Distortion. Crunchy. Mm -hmm. cool. Let's do dual. Nasty. <laughs> okay. Nasty's about to work. Necessary. <laughs> I'll accept a plug in. <laughs> what do you use? GTA. So GTA distortion from oh, okay. Bass. No, quad off first, man. Oh, yeah. Give <laughs> it quad off first. Sorry. Yeah. True. Bass. Massive. Okay. <laughs> Pads. Hands up, maybe. <laughs> no, that's melodies. Pads. Dark. Oh, pets. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Emotion. Oh, cool. Good Good one. Nobody ever says maxi. I don't know why. Analog. Bigger. Moog. Mm. Oh, nice one. Mm. <laughs> we, we should rate and have, see which one wins between The Moog is better. <laughs> Festivals. Inspiring. Uh -huh. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's. Saw. Necessary. Oh, it's one of the elements, okay. Short? I yeah. saw that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw, yeah. Uh, good foundation, good basics, yeah. Vocals. Uh, short, one liner drops, that's what I like. Yeah. One liner drops. Mm. Cry See, and die? <laughs> cry and die, that's amazing. Mm. <laughs> I hit them both, I got two points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This could be a tiebreaker, 808. Mm -hmm. Feel in your stomach? Most important. Mm. Uh, listen, we, international winners. I don't know. I, can't, I, can't. I think they both win. It's our, our international. It's, this is like having batters on either side of the plate at the same time <laughs> throwing the ball. So this, this is the first for us. That's the first double batter spot. Absolutely. We Absolutely. had a lefty and a righty. Double batter sounds <laughs> like a big. Like hamburger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the double batter boxes. That's true. Great, Two. Great Two. job. Great job. Absolutely. Two producers. So why don't we keep that going? Let's introduce our wonderful producer. He's Will Thompson. He's over in our corner office. William, are you there? I'm here. Hello. You got uh, some stuff for our esteemed guests? Oh, my gosh. Yes. I have a lot of questions. I bet you do. Fire <laughs> I'm away I'm there, being brother. Inundated. So, um, let me go with the first one here. So this one comes from Miles Schwartz. Your synth sounds uh, are always so big. Do you primarily use analog or digital synths? And if so, what tricks do you use to get your synth sounding so big and wide? Well, there's a few tricks we do. And the thing is we use analog synth synthesis because it's stronger than all the soft synth wear. Uh, but the key is still for us layering and not more than three or four synths. Some people, I come in the studio, I help them out on a track and I see like 15 leads doing all the same stuff. It's like, wow, the most important thing is like, what do you want to approach and what do you want to do in this track? For instance, Cannonball, the track we did with Justin Prime, is there's like this really one big riff mm -hmm. and there's a filtered one that comes up. Right. And the filtered one creates the emotion and the other one is just like slapping you in the face. It's, and those are just two really big synths and uh, with a lot of reverb on it, but as well gated a little bit so it doesn't really is, um, like drown in the track. And I we think also, oh, 
And, and we actually, a lot that we use is an exciter, the Aphex exciter, which is great to boost the melody. It's really dangerous, the high, high midi end is really dangerous, but it works great on leads. But we always, always, always put a mono lead all in between, because sometimes the sounds are so stereo, and mm. to get a really like big effect, you miss your, and then you go to mono stereo, and then it's gone, like, no oh, way. And so we always put in this mono sin, and we, we go to mono, and then we, oh, this is good, go to stereo, and then it's still yeah. there. So it still has and, that. And the other thing idea. is, and uh, the other thing is like, with all respect for Nexus, they have a great synth and great presets, but they sound here. German. No, they sound. They sound. <laughs> <laughs> they sound. That's what we always say. They sound here. If you're in the car, especially in the car, I don't know why. If I'm in my car, I listen because I, we sometimes we use, of course we use the Nexus just to try out a melody before we really make it big. They don't really sound really big, and we. Uh, if, if, if you put on a lead, it should like totally cover you, like the whole car should be the melody and that's why it's important for us to use the Virus C, actually it's 90% of our melodies are in Virus C or the TI. Will, give us another one. Great answer, guys. Okay, this one comes from Paul Fox on Facebook. If you are an up-and-coming producer in the electro-progressive house scene, would you recommend trying to get your tracks released on popular labels or would you set up your own label? Well, to set up your own label is really dangerous because even um, there are some labels that have a big following. Mm -hmm. So um, and people like if they see if they, if they go online for the beatport, just name something right you, and they, they see oh this label is popular and they just like go there and download it or listen to it. And if you if you're big or you're just really talented and you start your own label, no one's going to see you. Yeah. So yeah. you always have to label slot a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's how we call it, your label slot. Mm -hmm. So you just bring out big track yeah, there. We do it on there, purpose. Like there. we go in every label, uh, Dimac, Musical Freedom, Spinning, and just like uh, they have a different crowd following, and it makes your track like go everywhere. And yeah. Uh, the business side of music, also in the electronic genre, is like, it's so hard, it's so tough, and creating a label, of course, on the long term is amazing, but to get some attention and to draw some attention from the big crowd, uh, our advice is go to a big label first, make three, four, like, really big tracks, people will, like, keep their eyes on you, and then you can do start your own thing, and people, like, start following you, and you cre create your own platform. Great advice. Will? Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I'm getting beaten over the head about kick drums in the chat room here. Okay. Everyone wants to know about... Release the pressure, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everyone wants to know, I mean, first of all, your signal chain and what kind of um, processing you do in your kick drums and do you do any layering? Basically, everyone wants to know how do you get your kick drums sounding so huge? It's a good thing. The, the funny thing is, uh, like, you can sample a kick, of course, and you're looking for it, and then you have to be happy with the result you have found on the folder. What we do is like, sometimes we have this attack of a kick we use, but uh, we mostly create the, the bass part and the tail uh, with the real synth. can be any synth actually, you just LFO it, modulate the synth. Three channels, like, like there's, a, there's a certain attack you want to feel on the, the 100 hertz feeling. Yeah. The and, the <laughs> and then the pressure. <laughs> That's the pressure we call, there's always a sob that goes lower than 60 hertz till, till 30, so it mm. rolls down. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Our subs, they roll. Mm. They never like, uh, they always, uh. It's you know not what like I mean? A bass. They, they, People they use a kick as a bass, on like, like, uh, uh. But if you let, have, give a kick a modulation from 100 to 50 hertz, it's less like, mm. Mm. And that's like that's what makes it rolling and dynamic. Mm. And but it's really hard though, because on that cannonball track, I think we spent Dude, so uh, maybe two days on that kick. Wow. Like we was like, oh, we need this kick. It it's, like it's, got, it's got a note too. It's not just a kick. It's exactly. A note. That's the second secret we always do. We always tune our kicks, and mm -hmm. uh, and and there's one secret you cannot enjoy. Uh, it's good for us. We have a kick area in our studio, and I always <laughs> go sit there, and he's like tweaking, yeah. like, no, no, go back. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's it, baby. And then uh, that's, that's how he like. <laughs> it's okay. weird because it's stupid. It's not like it doesn't make any sense, but the, we have this. Yeah, we have this rule and it works, so we're not gonna lose it. And it's a little bit gained, so it doesn't so go over the edge, but it's a little yeah, bit gained we, kick. We yeah. actually still work on a Sony DMX R100, so we use on we, we use hardware to mix down our tracks, oh, and that's cool. why it sounds, I think, bigger you than go an, in the box track. Nice. So we use like two or three channels on the kick, make it big, like clipping, okay? In the box, clipping is really ugly sometimes. On our channel, we just gain a little bit, and you got that extra, extra power. power, and so it makes your track harder, which people think your kicks are bigger. That's it. That's the key. William. Okay, Great. this kind of has Great. to do with the kicks. People are, you know, want to know about the low end. Um, how do you maintain uh, such a tight low end punch when mixing stereo bass? 
do you just mono all the stuff that's low end, or do you use stuff like MS plugins? How do you get the, the bass sitting at where no, you want bass, it? For us, bass, like bass, and I mean bass from 0 to 160, should be mono for us. If you got this nice guitar-y, like grungy mid on a bass, we, we use a different channel for it and pan it and just low cut it till 160, 200 hertz, with, so it doesn't phase in the low. Sure, but true. Yeah. Mm. William, you got another one? I sure do. Uh, how important is multiband compression uh, to you guys? Uh, some people say they don't even use it at all, at all in your genre. We, oh. didn't, we don't use it that much, but um, be, I think it's really dangerous to, for example, put one uh, uh, like plugin on, on your leads. It's really hard to feel if it's, if it's good or not. I think that we, uh, and that's our lead sound pretty natural, so we, we don't like that we don't push it out too much. We have some waste plugins we use a lot, like the the L three six. What's it called? The three sixteen. The three sixteen. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's it's the one so we. It's dangerous. It's really dangerous, but you can. Chain multiband compression. Yeah, that's that's we that's the one we use sometimes. But yeah, that's but a good question. I, I'm not a big fan of multiband compression no, no. on one track, I, I like on a I like on an aux or on yeah. something, but like one chain one. Mm. No, we no, we yeah. actually. No, maybe the guy's right. We don't do it that often, actually. He was like, no, do we do it? Sometimes. A little maybe if we're a lo really lost and don't know what to do, like, <laughs> let's try multiband. <laughs> <laughs> guys, Shorten, <laughs> Shorten Valder, yeah. we got to tell you, we have enormous respect for what you do. Thanks. Enormous Thanks. respect for the genre. We want to give a real shout out to Mike Shearer, who helped put this together. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Um, Thanks, Mike. We have engaged Mike a little bit to help us walk through the space so we can approach it with the respect and homage to Ken. He's based up in Canada and does yeah. great work and delivered us a spectacular <laughs> first guest. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Pleasure. guys. Thank Pleasure. you very much. It was amazing. We're honored that you're fans of the show. We, we really are. Yeah, really. There's much more information that we want to get out to our audience about the space. Would you guys, can we get you back or do some special things with you? So oh, we could, yeah, we, we would love to. The good more. thing is we're, we're in LA like almost every month for a week. We can so. do oh, a studio shot and session and just let's yeah. show you how we, what we do and film oh, it. That'd we'll, be great. We'll yeah. get creative with you. And you guys are on tour, right? You're, yeah. you're moving around? We're yeah. going to Penn State uh, tomorrow, tomorrow and then uh, some show in Boston. We have a show in San Diego, show in Austin. Orlando. Orlando. Get out and get a chance to see these guys. Um, we get a chance to spend time with these folks before the show. We can tell the kind of people that are really good people. These are really good people. Really we're, good. we're honored. It's always good to go back and get those really great episodes yeah. of those yeah. really talented folks. Dave, take us home. Man, you know, I was just sitting here thinking um, about what to say. And when you look at a group like Show Tech and, and the way they create records and music, um, the software that's involved, and, and we're here, her, with it. A bunch of guys that do it and they do it right they're all musicians and have that musical quality to it uh the future of our industry look, look great looks bright see you next week see ya